on behalf of parul university i welcome to all for today's webinar on topic future scope of solar energy uh, welcome sir i i warmly welcome to all of you uh, myself sonal pujara head of department applied science and humanities uh, welcome you sir and uh, accept this uh, uh, flower of bouquet in this uh, pandemic situation thank you <laughs> yes krishna uh, now uh, jessi krishna sir now i'm going to introduce our today's expert uh, he has a zealous and enthusiastic enthusiastic personality he is a mentor to startup and support entrepreneurs in clean tech sector and have dedicated his life to society through the ngo muni sevasram where he is a trustee and traveled around country and world to share the knowledge and core competencies he has more than 35 years of experience in solar and sustainability sector he is a social entrepreneur if i talking about his uh, journey as a entrepreneur uh, so he is a founder of gadia solar energy system private limited some milestone project developed and installed by gadia solar uh, gadia solar went on to become one of the world's leading solar concentrating system manufacturer and installer for solar cooking and implemented many large system including the world's largest solar system uh, solar steam cooking system at shirdi that cooks 50000 meals per day gadia solar installed the first solar steam cooking system for indian army which is also the world's highest solar steam cooking system at leh ladakh Gadia Solar also developed and implemented India's first and largest solar air conditioning system where steam generated by solar system is used to run a 100 TR system to cool a 160 bed hospital world's first solar crematorium is being built at Munishrevashram with a 50 M2 stepper concentrator and will be hybrid with biogas with that he is also co-founder of excellent renewable private limited to offer biogas solution in india he is trustee at munishrevashram he is chairman and mentor at msa renewatech uh, foundation he is chairman of msa bioenergy private limited he is also a chairman of sunrise csp india private limited and many more things about him so without not wasting much more time of audience i am handing over the session to gadia sir sir please uh, thank you beta jay sri krishna yes sir uh, 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 friends uh, uh, but then I, i start with jay sri krishna not because i live in and work for munish seva ashram but because uh, i just want to uh, make you aware how lucky or how blessed we in uh, india are just just ask yourself How come uh, in, in our language there is no word like good morning, good afternoon, good evening? But in India, whenever we want to wish someone, we will say Jai Sri Krishna, Namaste, Jai Guru Dev, you know whatever, uh, Jai Sri Ram. But we never say good morning. And why is that? Because India is one of the few lucky country in the world where you don't have to wish for good morning because our every day is good morning. The good morning has to be wished by a person in Germany or USA or other countries because they do not know whether there will be sun or not. They live in a cold climate. It sometimes for months they do not see the sun, so they are bla- always begging for sun. Whereas we are very lucky, and that's why we have taken our sun for granted, and we are not using our uh, energy which we get, which we are blessed with. So I am very uh, glad uh, that uh, today I am going to talk to you about future scope of solar energy, and uh, solar energy itself is a very large subject, so uh, it's not possible to cover it in one hour. So today we will restrict ourselves on solar. thermal applications because uh, as you may be aware uh, energy is the driver of all economy and uh, all countries who consume more energy they are the rich country because what they do is they use the energy uh, available uh, in the f- fossil fuel uh, to power themselves and because of that their productivity increases see if you look at the history of mankind earlier there were no tools there was no power people used to do, use their own muscle power then suddenly they discovered that why do i use my muscle power can i not use animal power and they started using uh, donkeys and then horses and then cow, now ox and all so then we started using uh, that power so that the uh, productivity increases for farming and for driving and for carrying weight we started using elephants and then uh, oil was discovered and then people started using 
uh, fossil fuel for uh, producing power in form of electricity for heating for safety and also to uh, run ships and planes and all so energy is the prime mover of the whole economy uh, and unfortunately uh, our country does not have many oil resources so we all know that oil is available in, in plenty in middle east in saudi arabia and muscat and kuwait and all so they are blessed with uh, uh, oil and because of that their whole economy is doing very well because they are able to just dig uh, or take the oil out of the ground or see and uh, export it world over and they make money out of it and practically all countries are dependent on energy and uh, india also imports nearly 50% of our energy requirement we spend crores and crores of rupees lakhs and lakhs of crore rupees just to import oil to power ourselves and that's why the idea is how can we become independent you know, it, it is question of energy security why do are we dependent on other countries because if you remember in olden days uh, india was not allowed to have relationship with israel though israel and india have been very close uh, historically uh, but uh, the middle east country saudi arabia said if you have relations with israel they will not supply you oil because they had created an embargo against israel so india though it was wanting to make friendship with israel was not allowed it's only recently our government has become very strong and said look we don't care if you don't give us oil we will uh, do without oil because india has now suddenly started discovering its own oil so as you may be knowing india is now discovering oil in uh, bombay high and uh, slowly our dependence on imported oil is less and now we have also tied up with countries like venezuela england norway uh, usa where we can also uh, import oil from you know so now the middle east countries are not as powerful as they were so which has given us a bit more freedom but still even if it's not just about energy security it is also about safety i always say that even if you we were to be lucky and you want to discover more oil in our country unfortunately the time has come that even if we discover more oil and gas we may not be able to use it the ask yourself how can if you if you discover oil why can't we use it we will not be able to use it because every time you burn 1 liter of diesel or oil or kerosene you are producing 2.2 kg of carbon dioxide and i'm sure you must have heard about global warming which is because of uh, the carbon emission because every time you burn any fuel you also the by product is carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide is getting accumulated on the upper atmosphere and does not allow the uh, sunlight to go out i mean the heat to go out because it is called gla glass house effect where uh, the carbon dioxide layer in the atmosphere allows the sunlight to come in and uh, glass acts like a glass so if you just if you are sitting into your car which was closed you will realize that your car has become very hot and why is that because a glass has a property it allows the light to go inside but does not allow the heat to go out and that's why the car becomes hotter and hotter the same effect is happening also like a greenhouse effect that is because of this greenhouse gases the light comes in and it heats up the atmosphere but the heat is not allowed to go out of the atmosphere and because of that there is a big problem of global warming and because of global warming we are facing floods cyclones uh, and a lot of disasters so even if we are able to discover more oil we may not be able to use it because it is also destroying our environment ecology and uh, disturbing the life of mankind not only mankind but all living beings so solar energy is going to be very very important and will play a very big role i do not know uh, because i was told that you are about uh, from different different semesters some are beginners some are from third semester some are from sixth semester and also from different different fac uh, so faculty so i will just give you sort of a brief preview of uh, understanding wh why and what india is doing to become to, uh, energy self sufficient so uh, our indian government has uh, declared a policy uh, to produce 100 gigawatt Uh, of solar energy uh, so 100 gigawatt energy by 2022 has to come from solar energy what is gigawatt we all know kilowatt because every unit what we the, in our meter runs is 1 kilowatt 1 kilowatt is 1000 watt and then uh, 1000 kilowatt is 1 megawatt and 1000 uh, megawatt is 1 gigawatt so india wants to produce 100 gigawatt that means 100000 megawatt or 100 1000 into 3 times more uh, of kilowatt per year with solar energy and uh, we has india has been able to make a lot of progress but if you look at it most of the uh, power which has come now in india has come from a technology called photovoltaic uh, there are the two forms of solar energy 
the first form of solar energy is photovoltaic where you directly uh, convert the sunlight falling onto a panel which is a uh, which is having silicon and the silicon is a property it converts sunlight into electricity and from pv panel you can either put the power into the grid which is called the rooftop policy or you store the power in the battery and use it yourself it's called uh, island operation that means you are not connected with grid you can produce your own power store it in battery and use it at night so uh, at present in india most of the power are uh, 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 grid connected that means people have put power plants on their roof or on the ground and the power power is generated is fed into the grid and then uh, when you get the electricity bill in the end of the month what happens is that whatever power you have fed into the grid will be deducted from your bill so because of that now a lot of people are a lot saving a lot of money and some people are even selling more power than they are uh, they are uh, uh, using so very often they even get money instead of paying money so this is the way government is trying to incentivize people that you please use your rooftop produce your own power and the cost of photovoltaic has gone down by 90% in the last 5 7 years because of the scale of economy when whenever you start manufacturing in a very big way you get a scale of economy so that is a uh, photovoltaic technology now the other form of using of technology is solar thermal where you directly convert sunlight into heat so why not photovoltaic because photovoltaic sounds very good it is become also very cheap but the problem with photovoltaic is that photovoltaic is very expensive to manufacture to put up a photovoltaic manufacturing plant you require thousands of crores of rupees so actually in india there are hardly any manufacturers of photovoltaic cell all the cells are imported from russia china and other countries so what happens now is that india is only importing the uh, cell and then we are making panels out of it so actually the money is made by our enemies the chinese and not in india so we are not creating jobs the second problem with photovoltaic is that efficiency is very less so how do i defi uh, what define def efficiency efficiency just imagine your car when you you are driving scooter you talk of average at how much kilometer does, does your uh, what's the average of your scooter or bike and then we say oh it is 40 kilometers per uh, liter so whichever gives you more is more efficient so energy, uh, efficiency is uh, energy output divided by energy input so more energy you get output more efficient you are now the efficiency of solar photovoltaic cell is only 19 to 20% at present that means if on uh, the thumb rule is that uh, the nature sends us about 1000 watt per square meter of sunlight energy now that is about 1 kilowatt per uh, square meter so if it falls onto your panel only uh, 10 20% of it that means 200 watt is produced into electricity the rest 80% is again going back into the atmosphere so that means you are only able to convert 20% of the energy so you have you require large space the system is inefficient it is made from silicon which is uh, again uh, how will you dispose it afterwards and a lot of energy goes into manufacturing uh, the photovoltaic cell so uh, the advantage of solar thermal which i am going to talk about is that solar thermal systems directly convert sunlight into heat and the efficiency of your system is always above 50% that means instead of 20% you are able to convert 50% of your energy into uh, usable energy so wherever we require heat uh, there is a great opportunity because you are able to do very energy efficiently uh, that they are trapping of heat and because normally whenever we talk of electricity or power we always think of electricity because we think because that's what we use you know to charge our phone to run our fan to run our tv uh, or ac but if you look at the statistics of all the energy which india uh, fuel uh, india uh, imports 70% of the fuel which is coming into our country is not used for producing power or electricity but it is used for heating so uh, the india requires a lot of solar thermal energy uh, because uh, that is where you are able to save import so uh, normally when we talk of solar thermal applications i am sure most of you uh, like previously uh, baroda is one of the few city where there is very uh, extensive use of solar both photovoltaic when you look from your terrace you will see many houses having panels so either they are photovoltaic power panels which are producing power electricity and but uh, most of the houses previously had solar flat plate collectors so flat plate collectors is a technology in which uh, there are uh, panels with copper and uh, aluminium uh, uh, tubes and fins and there is a glass layer above it and the back side is insulated so on the left you see the uh, presentation where the solar rays is uh, going through the glass 
uh, cover which is transparent and falling onto the absorber plate, which is, uh, you see on the top, there are uh, riser pipes along with the plate on it. And then the back side is insulated so the heat is not radiated backward. And now what happens is that the glass allows the sunlight to go in, does not allow the heat to go out. And because of that, the absorber absorbs the heat and it's painted black or with some coating because of which it can become hotter and hotter. And then the water passing through the plate is heated. So most of the system which we see in the terraces are uh, normally, uh, we call it thermosiphon system. That means you don't require any pump. You use the principle in physics, which uh, is that anything uh, that becomes hot uh, rises. So that's uh, one of the reasons why, why does uh, smoke rise? Because when you heat something, the air becomes uh, thin and because of that, the density of, uh, reduces and then because of that, the smoke goes up. In the same way, uh, the cold, hot air will go up. The same principle is used in solar thermal uh, flat plate collector, where when water becomes hot, it gets collected into the upper part of the tank and then it keeps on circulating on its own without any pump. Uh, so it's called thermosiphon system. And that's how uh, you see a system with a panel and then a small tank above it. And because of that, they are able to produce hot water. And then hot water is stored into an insulated tank. And then because of that, you are able to get a hot water during morning for bathing. Uh, so on the left, uh, I showed you a solar system working of a solar uh, thermal photo, uh, for a flat plate collector. On the right, you see the same technology again. There is this collector, flat plate collector. But what they are doing is they, are, they, don't, they don't have a tank on the top, but they are actually circulating the water. So it is called force flow circulation. So here there is a pump which is circulating the water. So the water passes through the flat plate collector, gets heated, uh, goes into the tank. In the, the, in there is a spiral of pipe inside, as you see, it's a, we call it a heat exchanger. And then uh, the water uh, passes on the heat to the water in the tank and again goes back to the collector. So it keeps on circulating uh, in the closed loop. And the... Uh, the cold water is now pumped into the tank in the outside and that gets heated and then hot water goes into your house. So this is called force flow circulation. So the efficiency of a force flow circulation is better because the, the heat comes into the laminar flow. Sorry, so, uh, sorry, sir. Uh, Deepak sir, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Uh, um, can you present your screen? Oh, it's not there? No, no, sir. It's not visible. Oh, oh I'm so sorry. Oh, my God. <laughs> Okay. It's okay, it's okay, sir. It's okay. Present now. Is now oh, able to see the screen? Not yet, sir. Not yet. No? Yes, yes, sir. Now it's showing. It's showing that you are presenting your screen. Sir, now open. Uh -huh, yes, yes, sir. Now it's showing. Okay, okay so sorry, actually, I was all the time in because I, I had uh, given the screen back to you, so I had forgotten to. Uh, okay, okay, sorry, sir. Sorry, okay, sorry, no, 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 my, my okay. mistake. So, uh, okay, again, just to summarize on the left, you see a system where you see a flex collector where there is a metal frame with a uh, back, and the pipe uh, water goes through the pipes and gets heated, uh, and then uh, it goes into a tank which is normally above, and then that is called thermosiphon. On the right, you see a system with a closed loop system uh, where uh, again the water passes through the flat plate collector to the pump. The pump pushes the water uh, through a coil immersed into a tank and then the uh, hot water passes on the water to uh, the uh, water outside the heat exchanger and then it goes back to flat plate gets heated again so it keeps on circulating inside. So it's called closed loop circulation. And uh, so uh, as I said now there are two types of solar thermal systems hot water system. One is uh, thermosiphon where you don't have the pump and the other is uh, force flow circulation where you have a pump which circulates the water and uh, as I was saying uh, the, the force flow systems are more efficient because you are coming to the laminar flow. I will not go too much into technology in one hour. What I can do is I can just touch uh, and explain you briefly and I'm sure while you study the, your professors will go into the uh, physics of it and uh, explain to you know, the, the thermodynamic working of the system. So this was very, very prevalent in India. Practically 30-40% uh, population of uh, cities would have uh, flat plate collectors for bathing. And the best part was that you heat the water during the day, you store it into the insulator tank and you can use it at night. But then suddenly uh, there was a technological jump. Uh, suddenly now you see now there are new type of collectors which have come up. They are not flat plate collector, but they are uh, collectors which are made from vacuum tubes. 
So the tubes you see, they are actually glass tubes, uh, coated black inside, and then the water goes inside. And then the, uh, the, the tube has two covers. So one is a, a pipe uh, through which the water is circulated, and outside they have created a vacuum. Now the reason why they create vacuum is that uh, vacuum does not allow radiation losses, and because of that, your efficiency of a collector increases. You can also achieve higher temperature because flat plate collector can go up to 60, 65 degree, whereas in vacuum tube you can go up to 70, 75 degree. And then the latest now world over people are now using uh, flat plate uh, uh, means collectors are they call it compound parabolic concentrator. So what they have done is that behind the glass tube, uh, on the left below you see uh, there is a mirror. So the sunlight is falling not, not directly on the flat plate, but it is, if it is reflected through the concentrating type uh, mirror behind onto the vacuum tube. So it's called compound parabolic concentrator. So this can give you a temperature of about 80, 85, 90 degrees centigrade. And uh, now uh, it is also very cheap and, but unfortunately all they come from China. There is not a single manufacturer of uh, solar photovoltaic cell and also the vacuum tube collector in India. So uh, this was the scene uh, of solar thermal energy when I came back to India. Uh, I studied in Germany and I had done a process in environmental engineering and did not even know that I'm going to enter into solar. But it was more by chance that I was pulled into solar because my wife was running the NGO and when she started running the NGO, she wanted to do environmental protection. And then she realized that uh, if you want to protect environment, you have to protect forest. Because uh, deforestation is one of the biggest challenge, not only to mankind, uh, but uh, world over, not only in India. So deforestation, as you know, means uh, the forest brings rain, forest covers the ground, it gives you shadows. So trees are the most important, it absorbs CO2. But unfortunately, you will be shocked to hear that 50% of the Indian population cooks on with biomass, with wood. Because they, they are in India, people live in villages, they don't have much enough money, they don't get LPG, they don't have enough electricity, or you, if they have electricity, they cannot pay for it. So what they do is they go and collect. So it's a very common picture when you are traveling into rural area, you will see women or children or uh, people carrying wood, carrying wood. And this wood is cut by uh, chopping out the trees and taken home for cooking. So when she started uh, using, so, uh, uh, started going to telling people that please don't cut forest because forest is our lifeline. People told her, you know, madam, it's very easy for you to say don't cut forest. But if you don't have wood, how do we survive? Because how can we cook? Because we don't get LPG, we cannot afford LPG. And we cannot, uh, we, uh, kerosene, we get some subsidized kerosene that is very little at uh, this thing. So we are forced to cut. We don't want to cut, but there is no alternative. So she came and told me that, look, you are a thermal engineer. Why don't you help me? And uh, I, I had done my master's in uh, energy conservation, energy management uh, at TU Berlin and MIT USA. So I thought it's a very simple problem because, you know, like, why uh, cooking such a simple process? Why do you have to make so much fuss about it? So, but to, to find a solution, you have to. Uh, one second, na. Better, maru kaal lecture chale chhe. Take urgent chhe. Ha, mu phone pata bhakar pehya. So uh, then I said, uh, okay, I will find for a solution, and uh, it's, uh, you have to look around and first see, miss, what is being done. Is there any technology available? And if it is available, then why do the people not use it? There's a technology called box cooker. And I'm sure most of you know box cooker, or, uh, but I did not. I was born and brought up in Bombay, so I had never had to miss my, my cooking on gas. So I was very surprised that there was only a technology called box cooker, which again works like a flat plate collector where you have a insulated box with a, a window which can be opened, the top cover. You put the cooking vessel, which are made from aluminum, you paint them on the black and then you uh, close the uh, window and then the light goes inside and then uh, the black, black covers absorb the heat and uh, also the bottom plate of the uh, cooker is also painted black. So the air gets heated, it goes up to 140 degrees centigrade. So whatever rice, dal, vegetable you have put, it gets cooked. You know, so it gets burnt. So I said, wow, so there is already a technology which is available in India. So why do I have to reinvent the egg? So. Well, I went to a village with my wife and they gave a lecture that, look, why don't you use solar cooker? Box cooker is available, government is giving subsidy on it, and you can now cook without using biomass or cutting the forest. And uh, to my surprise, uh, some villagers came and told me, sir, you know, you know box cooker. Many people also have box cooker here, but we are not using it 
So I said, but if you have it, why don't you use it? It can cook with it. They said, no, no, we know it can cook, but the problem is it cooks very slowly. You require about one and a half to two hours to cook. Second, you can only boil or bake. You cannot fry, you cannot give tarka. So to do especially in our Gujarat and north of India, we are surviving on rotis. So roti is one of our most important ingredients. So to make that, we have to make anyway, uh, start the fire. Then if you once you start the fire, then we can as well also cook rice and uh, dal on it, you know. So I realized that there was a technology which was functional, but it was not being accepted by people because it was not user friendly. So I'm sure as engineering student, you know that any technology which is user friendly is going to spread. We now want TV with a remote. We don't want to get up and every time go and change panel. We want phone where you can have, get maximum features. So even poor people have that same aspiration that why can't the technology be more uh, do what we want? They want? So what they wanted? They wanted a technology where you can cook fast, where you can fry, yeah, where can you can make chapati. So I went to Germany again and uh, here you see there are two logos. One is uh, a company called Sunrise CSP, uh, which is a company which is manufacturing solar concentrators. And on the right you see the uh, logo of Muniseva Ashram, which is an NGO not very far from Parul, uh, about 8 kilometers away from Bagodia, where we run cancer hospital and all. So unfortunately because of uh, Corona, we are not allowing people to come. But this whole ashram is a green ashram. And uh, many uh, students have been coming here in groups for your industrial visit, where you can see all this technology which I'm going to talk about in working. So these are not just slide, these are real on the ground projects being used. So I realized that there was a need for a technology where you can cook fast, where you can make chapati, where you can fry, which uh, it has to be lightweight, it is not to be fragile because glass keeps on breaking. So then uh, I went back to Germany and uh, luckily a friend of mine who was working with me in Germany, Dr. Dieter Seifert, had developed a technology which can do that. So I went there and I saw his technology. So you see a technology called concentrator. So it is nothing but like a dish antenna, it is a dish, parabolic dish. Uh, but what it does is it has a reflective uh, play, uh, reflector which reflects the light at one point. So what happens is now is that if you are, as we know in parabola, when the light falls, it concentrates the rays at one point. So the dish antenna, they concentrate the electric signal and you have a receiver because of the receiver, you, are, you get your TV current, they are made strong. And because of that, you can get TV and internet and all. Where, <coughs> as in solar, what they want to do is they are so considering solar energy. Now because of concentration of sunlight at one point, you get a very high temperature. So it is nothing but like a magnifying glass in reverse. Uh, where you in, in magnifying glass with your glasses here, you can burn a piece of wood and papers. So basically what we do is we actually let, let the sunlight go through our mirror, uh, lens and it concentrates the light at one point because we have a high temperature. So la wood or paper or grass starts burning. So this is a reverse magnifying glass in reverse. Now you can see now the lady is very happy now because she's able to fry, she's able to cook, she's able to make chapati, it cooks very quickly. You can put a pressure cooker and the pressure cooker will give you a whistle in uh, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. So I said, wow. So now I have formed that technology where you now a lady can, or well, anyone, uh, because even now gents are cooking, they can cook very quickly, they can do all what they want, and it is very easy. And luckily, some few friends of mine uh, who are uh, previously using box cooker, when they saw this technology, they were very surprised, very happy, and said, wow, that you have done a great job. But then, very quickly I realized that now, and I had started my company, called Gadia Solar to fund our NGO. So that's why I have the word social entrepreneur. I mean, so an entrepreneur is someone who makes money and a social entrepreneur is a person who makes money but uses it not only for himself but also gives it back to the society. So I was a social entrepreneur. We wanted to do something for the country, something for the world. So we said uh, we, to run the NGO require money. So we don't want to go to government and ask for a grant or we don't want to go for donation. We will make our own money and then use it to run our NGO to do environmental awareness and environmental protection. So uh, now we have started a company. Now the problem was suddenly I realized that people who needed a technology, the villagers, cannot afford such a technology because such a solar cooker costs about 10,000 rupees uh, to cook for 10 to 15 people. And uh, the middle class, the lady you see here or uh, uh, people like us or, or rich people, they don't want to use a solar cooker because the solar cooker requires them to go out in the sun. So a lady very jokingly said, you know what Deepak, you are a typical man. You all men sit in the comforts of your air conditioned office and we women are going to the sun. Can you why should I go out? I want the sun to come in the kitchen. So I say, oh, that's a great idea. 
So again, I went back to my Germany, to, met my friend and told him that, look, your technology is working, but the problem is that people don't want to go out in the sun. Can you not give the technology where the sun comes in the kitchen? And he said, no, Deepak, I don't have the technology, but I have a colleague uh, called uh, a physicist called Wolfgang Scheffler, who has a technology where you can bring the sun in the kitchen or heat in the kitchen. So I went and brought the technology to India from Germany again. So here you see on the upper slide a big dish, a parabolic dish, in which the sunlight is falling. And the sunlight is now reflecting the light uh, through the small opening on the wall onto a secondary reflector, which is deflecting the sun rays onto the cooking vessel. Now you can see the lady is able to cook in the comfort of the kitchen. And you can see she is smiling, very happy now. She doesn't have to go out in the sun. The sun comes in the kitchen. But the problem was that we could solve the problem of cooking in the comfort of the kitchen, but not at a cost at which people wanted. As I was telling you previously, 10,000 rupees for a village for a middle class lady and a rich, uh, they have money, they don't mind spending 20,000. But such a cooker now is costing 1 lakh rupees. And why is it 1 lakh? Because you have one big dish, then you have another dish below the cooking vessel, then you have to actually add something what is called tracking, that means the dish has to move along with the sun. Because the sun keeps on moving, we all know sun rises in the east and via south goes to the west. So your dish has to move along with the sun so that the light is always falling on, into your kitchen. So we have added something what is called tracking. So we have a clockwork which moves the dish automatically. So it's like a sunflower. The sunflower always faces the sun. So our dish is also facing the sun. But whatever the direction of the sun is, the light is going into the kitchen. So it's a very interesting technology. Uh, I, again, I don't want to go into technology because there are people from different uh, uh, streams. So we don't want them to confuse them because uh, there are a lot of civil engineers studying civil engineering, so they, it's not interesting to them. The physics is a bit more difficult for them. So now, as the industry, we were surprised and said, oh, now what do we do? Now we have solved the problem, but the problem is called dichotomy, that people who wanted it could not afford it, and people who could afford it did not need it because they had LPG, they had electricity, or it was not at the cost which they could buy. So then we said, okay, I cannot make my product cheaper, but what I can do is I can change my market. So instead of converting to domestic, cook, uh, domestic cooking, we said, okay, can we make our dish larger and cook for more people, 50 people, 100 children. So with, now you see the on the, uh, on the uh, bottom left, the, this is a kitchen where we are cooking for 200 children. So each dish is cooking for 100 children. So you see the, you see the dish reflecting the light uh, through the opening onto the second reflector, which is deflecting the uh, heat coming is not from the gas or wood, it is from sunlight. And as you can see, we absorb the heat. And you will ask, why is the, what is the reason why we have a liver on the left? Uh, the liver on the left is to give you the same convenience in cooking what we have in LPG. In LPG, we are able to increase and decrease the flame or do the on and off. So here what we have done is with this liver, what we are doing is we are opening and closing the window and uh, window then regulates the amount of light that comes in your kitchen. So just like uh, LPG, by allowing the light to come in, we control the heat that is coming in and you can do high flame, low flame, on and off, sitting in the kitchen. You know. So again, uh, when you design a system, you have to also make it user friendly. So we were very happy now that we had a technology, we started selling the system to government because in Indian government was, or even now they have a program called Midday Meal Program, where government is giving free food in rural schools so that the farmers and poor people send their children to school. So it is to incentivize uh, the family that, okay, my child, child will get free food, he's taken care of. And uh, so uh, otherwise now children are, are, are sitting home, parents have gone to work and they are not educated, they have malnutrition problem in Gujarat, yeah, you must be aware, there's a very large problem of malnutrition. So government have, has this scheme called mid -day program. So we started supplying systems in mid -day program. And then one day we suddenly faced another, uh, so it's very important once you start becoming an entrepreneur, you will start facing challenges. You, I mean, it is something what you call feedback. You, you hear from people what are the problem, what people give you ideas, sir, this is not working, can you not do this way and all. So it's very important that you have to always keep your mind open. In English, there's a very nice proverb which I like the most. It says, your mind is like parachute. It only works when it is open. So we have to always keep our mind open and not say, oh, nahi hoga, nahi chalta hai, log aise hai. We have to make our own experiences and only then believe it. So then suddenly we were told that, sir, the problem is we are able to cook during the day, but what about cooking in the night? What about cooking in the next morning when the sun is not there? So <coughs> now you see this is the world's first solar 
thermal storage system. What we do is we are actually now uh, reflecting the light onto a metal block, and then the metal block is insulated. The metal blocks get heated to 500 degrees centigrade, and when you open the lid, uh, it becomes like an electric hot pit. And now you are able to see. Now they are able to cook at night. So this was the world's first solar system storage system, which was installed at a, a NGO called Barley in Indore. And you can see they are able to cook at night. So as I was trying to show you, we started small with domestic cooking, we went to community cooking. Then we have to add uh, features like tracking, and now we have to add storage. So this is how you evolve. You know, so at present maybe you are asking yourself, why am I studying so much? Why are these equations and all? But if you want to achieve in, uh, uh, something in your life, if you want to become a good engineer, you will have to learn the equations because what are equations? Equations are nothing but understanding the principle of nature, and you you master the uh, way. Uh, not master you understand or you learn because you cannot master nature Ma nature is too big and too strong but we learn from nature and use that uh, laws of physics uh, to use entrap energy so we were in quite well but one day suddenly we received an inquiry from an ngo called brahma kumari in mount abu and they came and said sir we want to cook for 1200 people so we said oh no problem uh, buy so uh, like 12 to 15 our dish And uh, you will have 15 cooking place, and you can cook uh, with all the 15 dishes for uh, 1,200 people. And they said, "Sir, the problem is we don't want so many dish because if we have so many dish, we have so many cooking place. That means we require more people to uh, this and all. And also, our kitchen has to be facing uh, south. That means we have a north wall which through which the light is coming in. But our kitchen is not facing that way. So they said, 'Sir, is it not possible to?'" Uh, Put the dish on the top and reflect the light from top to bottom instead of sideways. Then I said, "But look, uh, I cannot tell the sun to go. The, the, I, I have to follow the sun, and the sunlight comes in in the inclined direction most of the time in the day. Uh, so I cannot reflect it below. And even in the in the noon, the sh the dish will be facing the sun. Not it cannot be put uh, turned turn upside down. Of course, with a magnifying glass, you can bring the light on the top. But then your uh, cooking vessel gets uh, the lid gets heated, not the cooking good." So uh, I said, no, that's not possible. And then suddenly I started asking myself, why are people saying this? And suddenly I realized that when we were when we were studying in the schools, we all have in our school project done something called periscope. You remember the periscope where we have a tube where we put two mirrors at forty-five degree, and we use it as a to put a show that how a ship can have a periscope with a submarine can have a periscope by which they can see the enemy. Vessel coming in, you know. So the what is happening is the light is reflected two times. So when it when the mirror is at forty five, so the light comes in and it goes down, and then there is another reflector which will reflect the light onto the other. So you are able to see the oncoming ship or enemy. So I said, wow. So why can't I use a, instead of one mirror, one deflector, two deflectors? But the problem in physics is that more you deflect or more you reflect, the more you lose because you can never reflect hundred percent of the energy coming in. So there is a lot of losses. So normally, the uh, reflection of a mirror, what we normally see in our when we comb over hair, it reflects only 85% of the light. About 12% of the light gets absorbed into the mirror. So and then if you use two, then uh, point, uh, 0.8 into 0.8, so it becomes 40% uh, losses. So we said no, we cannot do that. And uh, I was then saying, oh, why, why can't I use optical fiber? Where actually I can now reflect the light onto the fiber, and the optical fiber will bring my light, and then I can put all the wire under a big cooking vessel, so I can now use that way. But the problem was, optical fiber can transmit light, also electric signals, but they cannot transmit heat because the temperature, as I said, of the solar generated uh, concentration is about 500 degree, 550 degree centigrade, and optical fibers are made from plastic, and plastic will melt. So that was not possible. So again, I went back to Germany. I was working in a very famous uh, thermal engineering company, and I told them, "Sir, how can you give me optical fiber which can trans transmit the light?" He said, "No. Why do you want to optic optic fiber? You want heat. You don't want light." So that's how we developed the first world solar steam cooking system from Brahma Kumari. Where now what we do? We are doing is we have multiple dishes. So here you see a dish here, a dish on the top, uh, and in center there is a tank in which there is a water. In the pipe above uh, there is water. So the water comes into the tank. Now the sunlight is falling from both the side onto the heat exchanger, and because of the temperature or solar glare or solar flare of 500 degrees centigrade, the water starts boiling and it becomes steam. And now the steam is piped into your kitchen. So now the system is in the terrace, 
and the steam is coming through the pipe into the kitchen which is on the ground floor and now you see there are cooking vessels which are cooking not with flame but they are cooking with steam so this was a, a big uh, development we changed the way you cook for institutions wherever you want to cook for thousands of people now people cannot afford because you know in our house we have a small chula if you go to chinese they have a big flame you know but then how big can you make it so now the what wherever there is in five star hotels wherever there you go to a temple when they cook for thousands of people they are cooking with steam and now we are producing a steam with solar energy so this was the development of the world's first solar steam cooking system which was installed at prama kumari and uh, that gave us a lot of success and we went on to become bigger and bigger so prama kumari themselves installed a system for 20000 people meals per day then we installed a system at tirupati temple so this was the uh, world's largest solar steam cooking system installed at tirupati temple where we have 106 dishes on the terrace they are producing steam and that uh, uh, 3.6 tons of steam is going into the uh, kitchen which is on the fourth floor below and we are able to cook 30000 meals per day so as they said nothing success like success now we started doing uh, doing bigger and bigger system so this is the world's largest cooking system which we have supplied which is at shirdi temple in maharashtra near pune between pune and nasik so the year you see now we have also modified our technology we kept on increase the size from 7 square meter we went to 10 square meter from 10 we went to 12.5 now at present we are making 16 square meter dishes uh, chefle dishes and then they are producing steam and then steam goes to the kitchen and you are able to cook 50000 meals per day uh, i will be sharing the powerpoint with uh, sonal ji and then she can share it with you so uh, there you will also find lot of links where you can actually also go and see videos of this so there is a very famous uh, program on shirdi temple called mega kitchen and that is available on net geo or discovery channel you just have to google uh, deepak gadia uh, mega kitchen shirdi and you will get a whole link but i will also send you share the link so this was the world's largest cooking system and then as a businessman you have to start asking yourself okay great i have supplied to shirdi i have supplied to tirupati i have supplied to brahma kumari i have also supplied to shri shri ravi shankar we supplied to yoga institutions but then uh, there is going to be a limit you cannot keep on increasing the market size where else do they require mass cooking and then i was suddenly approached by ibm who were uh, having 5000 people working for them and they were wanted to cook for 5000 people and someone said oh why don't you do solar and so the ibm people came so this was the system which we installed for ibm in bangalore where you see now the system is on the uh, structure Uh, because they wanted to use the space below the structure so on the terrace we did not put directly on terrace but the production now the car is parked below and now the system is producing steam and the steam goes into the kitchen and they are able to cook for 1000 meals per day uh, for, at ibm in bangalore then we said oh now which are, which are the other markets so we started supplying to uh, universities so like parul as hostels and they must be working with thousands of people so parul could be an ideal candidate so i for me i have been uh, pro uh, promoting solar energy not just because i want to make money by selling my system but what i want to do is that i want each and every campus to have solar energy where they have solar thermal system solar pv system power gas because these are the technology for the future the whole world is now talking of solar age or green economy green ecology green technologies and this is where the new jobs are going to be created now the old power plants working with coal are being becoming obsolete uh, because they are very polluting so now this is the proper uh, areas where you can actually learn a lot and i always say it is better to do hands on learning instead of seeing a side show or uh, someone talking about it so if there is a system like this you can do a lot of experiments you can do so my request to parul university uh, faculty and also to go to management and tell them sir why can't we install such a system it will save us money and it will also become like a live laboratory for our students where they can learn of course this can only happen after covid but we have to start planning now So this is the world's highest solar cooking system, which we have installed at Ladakh in Kashmir. Uh, and you, you will ask a question, sir. How is it possible to cook? Because uh, in Maharashtra, in Gujarat, everywhere in summer it's very hot, and you can you are tapping the energy. But look here, in Kashmir, this is because you are at height uh, of nearly ten thousand feet. It's very cold. You can see the mountains are covered with snow. So how will you cook? Because there is very cold. That is a uh misperception we have our mind because we think that solar energy works on principle of trapping the heat from the sun no we are actually trapping the radiation the radiations uh, are better in winter because in winter the clouds are clear 
so if you ever want to see or there is a radiation look in the shadow so if your shadow is very good that means the radiation is good and if the shadow is very weak that means the radiation is not good and why is this radiation better in winter because in winter there are no evaporation it's cold so the water is not evaporating and because of that uh, the skies are clearer so the sunlight which is coming to the sunlight is not diffracted by water but it comes directly so solar system works better in winter than in summer because the radiations are better so this is to show you that it's not only is a beautiful system in the world's highest cooker but a solar system works also in winter and not only in summer and i was telling you for me when i started i was like saying okay we want to stop deforestation but people will buy system not because they want to save forest but because they want to save money so we said okay the first we have first is to save money second is to save forest environment but then we came across an article from a uh, statistics from a world bank we said or fao that is a food and uh, agriculture organization we said that 3.2 million means 32 lakh women and children every year die in the kitchen uh, kitchen because of the smoke it's called indoor pollution and i could not believe i said because normally when you cook in our house we cook with lpg there is no smoke but then when i went to the indian army kitchen and left you see the kitchen uh, which is the army was using it is a kerosene fired bhatti so there is kerosene which is uh, a chula a kerosene fired chula they call it and then uh, the all the smoke and soot and everything is there and look at the kitchen you know and you can see the air is so bad that people get lung disease and women even die faster because they are more fragile so uh, so now when we sell our solar system we say not only are you going to save money and save the environment forest and no one knows but you are also able to save the health of the people the same army kitchen you can see on the right it is now so clean it is very quick it is very convenient and now what we do is we also integrate a boiler into it so when you see this boy in red t-shirt there is a boiler so when the sun is not there you can see the a uh, metal storage which i showed you you can cook only stay, save energy for one or two days but there are three months when there is no sun so you need to also for food and that is now done by firing a gas fired boiler or ldo fired boiler so this is a boiler which is doing that so now i showed you the possibility of solar thermal application for domestic cooking community cooking institutional cooking but then okay so it's all about cooking and suddenly we realize that okay we got into cooking problem now we have started to become a big company we are supplying more and more cooking system but we had come back to india not to supply only cooking system we wanted to help our country we were invited by rajiv gandhi to come back and uh, help our country so we said look in the process of helping others we are helping ourselves we have become rich and now the poor, but the poor man is still doing whatever he was doing he has not been able to afford a slow cooker so how do we change that how can we help our country and not only ourselves or not only big temples and uh, colleges and uh, army and then we suddenly realized wow can you not use solar energy because he energy as i said is used also not only for cooking but in many other forms in industry and all so we said who is poor so and ask yourself who is poor in india and you will open your newspaper and see the poor are people who are farmers and that's why you keep on reading that so many farmers kill themselves because farmers are becoming more and more dependent on chemical fertilizers on pesticides they have to buy seeds and when there is a seed crop failure they die and and the farmer normally is a living price for this product so whenever you buy uh, bananas from uh, reliance mall or any other mall you will be surprised to hear that a banana for which you have paid 20 rupees per kilogram or dozen a farmer gets only 5 rupees so 25% of the money the other goes into supply chain in transport storage retailer wholesaler you know so there are so many middlemen that makes the money that farmer does not make money and because of that farmers are the one who help themselves so we said how can we help poor how can we help villages and then suddenly we realized that if you want to help a farmer you have to help him convert his perishable product into non perishable perishable means that means if you don't use it in one day vegetables you have to throw them away if you don't have a fridge in fridge you can put perhaps for two or three days so we said now okay, how can we help that so we suddenly we discovered so here you now you see what we are doing doing now doing is solar food processing so it's the same technology but we are not using it for cooking but now the light is falling onto the vessel in which there is oil and what a farmer is doing is uh, or the industrialist here is doing is is converting potatoes into potato chips so you can see here now this is uh, that pat uh, patris of uh, potatoes and is fried and a potato if you don't use it in 2 3 days it will start overgrowing and it will start getting shoots 
and you have to throw it away. But now if you convert into potato chips, you can keep storing it for one year, two years. You know, it doesn't get spoiled. So we are converting that porous, uh, perishable product into non-perishable. A farmer, if he sells potatoes, that's only 20 rupees per kilogram. But if he converts that potato into potato chips, he gets 300 to 400 rupees per kilogram. You know, the cost of your lays, what you eat, is about 600 rupees per kilogram. So now we are helping the villager by using solar energy for food processing. And then we started doing new applications. So here you see a solar bakery. Uh, where you know you can make solar energy, so this is an insulated box through which the light is going in and then you can put your bread, biscuit, cake, pizza basis and now you can do bakery. So all this now can be done at village level so that there is value addition to villager at the village level. And then we read an article in uh, Times magazine which said that the first and the second world war was because of oil but the third world war is going to be because of water. So we said, wow, if, can we not do water with solar energy? And suddenly, you know, we have to learn from nature. I, I say learn, do not master less of nature. So how does rain form? Rain is also forming from solar energy. The sunlight is falling onto the sea or any water body. And then water starts evaporating. It rises and then it condenses in the sky. It becomes cloud and it comes down as a rain again. So you said, okay, now we are having, so the sun is too far away. But I have a sun where I'm considering the sun. So there are more suns in this place. But can I not use solar energy for doing drinking, drinking water? So this was for the first time again where we uh, are now reflecting light onto this tank here in which there is water and the water is evaporating and then what is happening now is that on the uh, water which is going into the hood here we are again spraying water from outside, sea water. So what happens is the water gets cooled down so the steam condenses and you get condensate which is a distilled water. So this is a sea water or polluted water because of oil, the third one is going to be water. So there is a big demand, there is a big need for solar desalination system. There are but this is made the constant energy system where with one dish we are able to produce about 80 liters of You get to some optimum. And what we are doing is this is also called multi storage evaporation where we have multiple uh, layers of each other. Now, in industry, they also use vacuum. Because when you put vacuum, your boiling point of the water, which is at 100 degree, goes down at a larger the vacuum, the lower the boiling. Village, you are not going to be vacuum. So, friends, again, uh, to summarize, we went to cooking, went to storage system. What are the opportunities in India? Then in the technology, so here you see the application of wastewater evaporation because every time you use water, you got a lot of wastewater. So many times you all the water collect into this pond and then the sun evaporates the water. But then sun evaporates about one inch of water per day. And the water is 10 feet deep. So it takes a lot of time and then you require a lot of land. And now government also does not allow you to store your water into the ground because the water, polluted water will go into the ground and pollute the groundwater and drinking water. So we, now we are working on uh, wastewater evaporation. So here you see a dish is for your, uh, putting the light onto the water and increase the rate of evaporation. On the right you see an incinerator where virtually you can burn the waste. And on the right below here you see a sludge drying because wherever you have any uh, water treatment plant, you also get a lot of sludge. So what do you do with sludge? So the, uh, sludge drying. So again, uh, besides domestic application and rural application, there is a large application opening up industries and cities and uh, other applications. So, I do not know how many people have come to Munisa Ashram. Actually, as I said, you should come and visit the once because this is a temple of technology where we use all type of technology here. So, when I had supplied my system to Munisa Ashram for cooking for 500 children in a school called Vancouver, they came and said, Sir, uh, Deepak Bhai, I'm not sure for, because I'm a part of the Munisar Ashram and I live in Arabarka Ashram. Says that, that Deepak Bhai, you, you know, you're giving us heat when it is hot. Is it not possible to do air conditioning with the heat? Because, you know, we are spending crores of rupees every year to cool the hospital. And I said, but from heat, you can produce only heat. You cannot do cooling. They said, no, we can. Because what they were doing was they had a boil, wood fired boiler where they were producing steam. And the steam was going into a system called vapor absorption chiller, which is below the boiler. And in that, this technology, uh, what, they, what happens is the steam goes there 
and it creates chilled water and then the chilled water is piped into the hospital and then you can do cooling cooling it's called central cooling so as you know it's very simple that means what i do is now i replace the boiler on the left with my solar dish on the right where we have 100 <coughs> excuse me there we have 100 dish 5.5 square meter which is in the same quantity of steam which the boiler was producing which is about 400 kg per hour and now the the steam so now what we have to do is we are able to use the heat of the sun for cooling is it not perfect because you require cooling when it is hot when the sun is there at night you don't have to uh, or you, very often you need the uh, ac at night because the air cools down or so this was the uh, india's first uh, air conditioning plant of 100 ton for the 160 bed hospital and the technology is spread so this is how uh, my company or our company became the world's biggest company supplying solution so anywhere you go in india you will see cooking systems process heating and all which are our system but still uh we started facing problem limitations then we i'll talk to you about why so the biggest challenge we started facing was you require a lot of large area because solar sunlight as i said comes in a very diluted form the sunlight emits giga watt of power per square meter but by the time it reaches earth which is millions of kilometers away the sunlight becomes less and less and by the time it is falling into the ground watt per square meter is 1 kilowatt per square meter so that means we get a very diffuse light a very uh, weak light and that's why we have to concentrate it uh concentration so instead of having many this type bombay very uh and this is 160 square meter dish So on the right here you see a technology where you have a series of flat mirror such a way that they we call it fresnel principle so it's just like a magnifying glass magnifying fresnel lens uh so it is reflect light onto the heat exchanger here on the top and there uh, is a line focus and you can produce steam and then there's another technology called trough concentrator where you have a dish which is in a parabolic shape uh, but uh, like a half pipe cut half pipe and then the uh, focus is on these pipes here and you can see the water which is blue is coming in here and it gets heated as it passes on it becomes steam and then the steam goes uh, into a storage tank and then from storage tank uh, you can produce the power, power at night and you can run the turbine and you can produce electricity so <laughs> the world first the world's biggest solar power plant was installed in USA in 1970s in 1970s and it's still working it's a 380 megawatt solar thermal power plant but the problem was they were very expensive you required lot large area so now this technology is now picked up and now this is in spain spain is a very sunny region again you can see snow peak mountains but the solar system is working and they have a 50 megawatt power with storage where they are able to store power for 7 hours and you can still produce power from steam also at night with a technology called molten salt so on the middle you can see the technology of molten salt i'll show more about it so uh, suddenly we realize that there is a technology which can now heating and cooling but it can also produce power so it is called csp that is concentrating solar power that's why the name of concentrating solar csp we call heliostat where you have series of flat mirrors which are, is reflecting light at one point so which is called uh, on the towers is uh, there is a receiver which receives the light so here on the right you see there are uh, three fields reflecting light onto the tower and then uh, they, you, are, you are producing Uh, high energy and to run the generator the turbine and produce electricity so solar csp is the future wherever you want to produce power at night because at present technology is not good enough to store power because at present when you produce pv you are feeding into the grid because you cannot store it if you want to store it you have to store it into the battery just like our uh, 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 chemical batteries uh, lithium ion or uh, uh, lead acid batteries but they are very expensive they are very inefficient uh, the cost of power when you produce uh, store energy is 26 rupees per unit so of course the storage is not viable but with our thermal battery storage in molten salt we can store it uh, at uh, one third the cost so the, there is going to be big future so there are large power plants coming up where you will be able to store power in thermal energy you know. so now i will uh, show last few slides because we are already reaching uh, 1128 so now uh, in munisha ashram we are bringing a tech dish Uh, which is one dish is of 500 square meters so this is the world's biggest dish and why what advantage 
of the area so instead of requiring one lecker for uh, that uh, air conditioning plant which is where i showed you 100 dish the same one dish can do, uh, 500 square meter 250 square meter was doing so you are saving land area you are sorry, ref saving uh, reflecting area because now you only have one heat exchanger one receiver one tracking the cost goes down and now you have to do that so uh, Uh, we are replacing now this 100 dishes with uh, this one big dish which will do the 100 ton air conditioning and the uh, temperature in the focus can be as high as 1700 degrees centigrade. So here you see next year when you come here you are able to see this big world's biggest concentrator and also the world's most efficient concentrator where you are recovering 97% of the energy coming into the heat exchanger. So it's going to be a game changer uh, and you can also add multiple dishes and produce uh, high pressure steam and run turbine. You can go to uh, directly generate steam up to 560 degrees centigrade, 160 degrees centigrade. And now your application increases. Now you're able to produce electricity. You can do cogeneration, tri generation. You can use for grid stabilization. You can use for peak power. You can use for agriculture processing. You can do UHT milk, that is ultra high thermal milk. You can fertilize the water purification and desalination. You can use for urban and village solution. You can produce ammonia, hydrogen, methanol. And you can use in making steel and cement and everything and all. So friends, I hope that uh, in this one hour, I will be able to show you that the time now for you is to go into solar energy, be it photovoltaic, collector, be it, or you can go into biogas, but renewable energy, green technology is the future. Uh, in our ashram, we are installing the one big dish uh, where we should produce heating. Or, uh, turbine and then run turbine and uh, it will get electricity and uh, steam coming out of the turbine will be used again for process heating and cooling and because of that you have a very high efficiency as high as so uh, okay, uh, the last slide uh, again uh, the problem is technology can solve you know, offer solution but it has to be cost effective so this is the world's first village we have converted the whole village into smoke free village where we have simply solar cooker along with biogas now the whole village is cooking uh, with uh, solar cooker and biogas. This is the world's first smoke free village. And then poor people cannot read and write but they are very smart. I was very impressed when I saw a lady using a solar cooker not for cooking but for ironing cloth. And I gave her a prize because supply and now she says why can't I save money because I am buying coal and running the iron. So instead of iron she puts, uh, uh, she puts stone pebbles into it. And the uh, istri gets heated, the iron gets heated, and now she able to do ironing and save 200 rupees per day. So now a woman does not carry wood because, as I said, we started with my slide, the woman is carrying the wood into the villages, but now the woman can carry uh, uh, cookers and uh, they are do it yourself kit and then create the cooperatives and create livelihood. So now solar cooker is not only for cooking and doing hot water and steam and cooling, but it also makes livelihood. You can actually make money out of it. Uh, we were uh, invited by Bill Clinton and given an award for the work we did. This was my wife who actually brought me to solar. The commission came and Dr. Abdul Kalam came and visited Munise Ashram to see our solar plant, our solar technology. And Dr. Abdul Kalam promotes a technology called Pura, that is providing urban amenities rural area. I like villages and every village should be having solar system. So I have shown you the larger picture. Uh, future is great. It is also great. It is saving us, it is helping poor. Thank you very much. Yes, Okay, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Uh, today I feel very lucky to have a, such an eminent personality with us. Uh, very, very informative session. Thank you, Peter. Uh, three questions I got from the first year students, sir. Yeah. Uh, that I have right in chat box. The very right. first question is, uh, how do solar panels actually work? Yeah. You can convert
electricity during the rainy or snow Only you know, cell which are very sensitive, and they can also work in diffuse light, but they cannot work in cloudy days. They cannot work at night. Develop. Uh, and down more and more people are coming in. More scientists are working on solar because previously solar was very expensive, so very few people could afford it. But now more and people are buying solar because of that. More technologies are being developed. Youngsters like you to develop technologies. Question: Identify the problem. Yes, Any other, then you can find a solution. Very often we blind, so it's very important to ask questions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, one more question, sir. Uh, how do they dispose of? They have been depleted, uh, like. Sir, this is the one of the biggest challenge mankind is facing. That now gigawatt, uh, Gujarat uh, in Charanka they have put three hundred, like like sixty square meter. We see only panels and they produce power and put into the grid. There is a solar power. But the problem is after fifteen, twenty, twenty-five years, what will you do with the waste which will come up? And this is a silicon waste is a toxic waste because they are using cadmium and other chemicals into making the Soldering and all, and same problem is with the power with the battery. When you store it into lead acid and battery, disposal of lead is a problem. Disposal of iron, uh, lithium iron is going to be a challenge. So electronic waste is a big challenge. So we are talking of circular economy. How can you develop products out of in such a way that you can again recirculate, reuse it, and not just dump it? Otherwise, you have to again create a big mountains. If you go to Ahmedabad, there is a mountain of waste, and you know it is polluted with water, air. So I am glad that you have identified a problem. This is the future. Uh, okay, sir. And sir, one more question from my side. Uh, as I have registered myself as a PhD student in Parul University, uh, I want to work with the TiO2 substance uh, that has photocatalytic activity. So uh, I want to know that, sir, uh, what will be the application for the AG dubbed TiO2 substance uh, in solar cell application? I, I think you should come and visit us once, and uh, uh, I have to understand exactly what uh, because photovoltaic. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, what you are talking about? Photocatalytic, photocatalytic activity. Catalyzer is something which is used for making synthetic fuels. So I think that okay. And also, uh, it can be used for making uh, chemical reaction. You know, catalyst is nothing but uh, something which does not take part in it. So, catalyst, uh, photocatalytic is a great feature, and also. Developing solar cells which can produce both power and heat. Something is called thermovoltaic. Uh, it's called concentrated photovoltaic cells. So there is a great future for that. So I'm glad that you're doing a PhD. Okay, sir. Definitely will come to meet you, sir. Sure, sir. Sure. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. It was a very nice to have you with us. And I hope all the students and all the other people might have learnt a lot from today's session. Uh, on behalf of Parul University, I am very much thankful for spending your valuable time uh, and sharing your knowledge with us. And I am sure that in will take place if you wish so in uh, um, uh, in the campus. And I am respect of Parul University, our principal and. Uh, such an opportunity opportunity and make this webinar successful uh, so with this let us end and once again thank you very much for being with us have a nice day sir take care jessica thank you sir thank you very much jessica krishna god bless you okay sir okay sir thank you